good morning and how is everybody this fine Friday? So <clears throat> I wanted to come on and do a live and talk about food because the more we um, look into how we can help people change their health picture and how we can prevent, because let's face it, we, there's, we've got two things to concern ourselves with here. What can we do for people that are already been diagnosed and are sick? And then the other thing is, how can we ourselves prevent ourselves from getting sick? So I thought, let's talk about food. Hey, good morning, Lorraine. How are you doing, darling? It's a wee bit patchy. I was thinking my hairdresser friends will be saying, who put that toner on you? <laughs> um, so, yeah. And I've been writing a blog on um, what diet would you choose if you're diagnosed with cancer and if you're going through allopathic treatment, but also if you want to have, morning Natalie, if you want to have um, a go at healing your own body. And we're finding that now, you know, that people are coming towards us um, that are looking to um, heal themselves. Um, so there's definitely a bit of a shift um, from <clears throat> just accepting treatments to thinking about it and um, maybe holding hands with some of the treatments, maybe going it on your own. It all depends on what your diagnosis and your prognosis is. And I think it's really good to be very well educated. I talked to my cousin about this when she had breast cancer. She said, you need to know all this stuff before you get diagnosed because obviously um, once you, if you go into get filled with fear, you're not exactly going to be able to research the way you, you, you would when you're not filled with fear. We know that our IQ goes down when fear comes in. Um, so it's really important that we educate ourselves and that we're willing to learn a bit more about this phenomenal energy system we call the body and what we can do in order to change our chemistry. Now, I don't know if you've seen the the new research from Joe Dispenza's work, um, how they're changing the chemistry with meditation alone. Well, he's got a book, Healing by Thought Alone. And how when we think about certain things, how it influences our electromagnetic field, how it influences our genetic expression, our epigenetics, because what happens is we're changing the information inside. And that's something we really need to get clear on. When you are, because <clears throat> there's two different diets in my view. <clears throat> One, a diet that will heal, re restore, repair, that so it's taking you from a lower level of health to a much higher level. And then there's a maintenance diet, which is staying well. And they're two quite different things. Because I think if you try and think too long term with food, you just get overwhelmed and, you know, nobody wants to change their diet. Let's be perfectly honest about that. So changing your diet can be very stressful. But what we do know is the more of us that do it, the easier it becomes. So Janice Klein obviously doing incredible work with the Wellness Hub and teaching people all about ferments and sourdoughs and foraging. Um, morning Nicola. Um, things that we can go out and get for live. Seaweed. In two weeks we've got Rory McPhee coming to the farm. We're going to be foraging seaweed and Rory's going to show us all that. I mean he's been all over the world um, learning about seaweed and dishes that you can make from this absolute powerhouse of nutrition. You know in Scotland we have all the superfoods here. We have all the oily fish, the salmon, the mackerel, the herring, the trout. It just was right out there, right outside the window. All the berries in the summer just growing wild before we started hacking everything down and concreting over everything. So we have, and we've got tons of root veggies, <coughs> which are going to help sustain us and give us energy along with all this fatty stuff and then also the animals. Sorry, vegans, but... If you lived in Scotland and there wasn't supermarkets, you would have to eat some kind of meat to survive <laughs> in the winter especially. So we have it all there. But now, obviously, thanks to the good old government and the FDA, we're eating food that's actually not even food. 
and we're, the, it's going into the body and the body doesn't simply doesn't recognise it. So it's got two options, three options. One, it just sends it right through the other side. So you'll find things like IBS and Crohn's. Um, people are actually ulcerative colitis. The, that, the food, the body's like, get this out of here, get this out of here. You can bloat, you can be exhausted. Um, or a combination of all of these things varying depending on what the state of the digestive system. Now, I'm doing, as you know, we've got this, we're just doing a ton of training on sound healing, vibrational healing, the electromagnetic field, and how we can really use our technology to help prevent disease. But the harsh reality is, in between see, being at the farm or coming to see myself or Stuart or Helen or any anybody that's going to help you, you have maybe that one hour or what that one week, but then most of the time it's you in your own house going to your work and it's the day, things that we're doing daily that can take us towards health or take us towards further dis-ease. And of course, food plays a huge part in that. Now, can you do it without changing your diet? Yes, but it's much more challenging <laughs> because that's when this has to come in. And if your microbiome is not happy, then you're not going to be happy either because the microbiome is transferring. It's, it's like, give me this, give me sugar, give me carbs, give me wine, give me bread, whatever it is that you're craving because that's what you normally eat and that's what your microbiome is shouting for. So when you go, like I just started juicing again when we did the, the August challenge and I said to Kirsten, it'll be good for me to get the juicer back out. I'm a big fan of juicing and, um, and now I'm starting craving juice, of course, because I've been drinking it every day for the last few weeks. So the, the, that's the microbiome that are going, give me juice, give me juice. It's so kind of obvious. But maybe more importantly these days is the the actual understanding of the gut brain gut heart brain axis and connection and our memory with alzheimer's being terrifying and they're calling it type 3 diabetes which is all sugar and simple carbohydrate lead and stress so if i am drinking the most amazing juice filled with every foraged plant and everything and I'm thinking, oh, is this going to work? Oh, I hate this. This is disgusting. I wish this hadn't happened to me. Da, 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 da. Well, guess what I'm doing? Inadvertently, I am changing my chemistry with my thoughts. I'm going to change the chemistry with the food. But already the vagus nerves firing away into my digestive system, causing chaos, disturbance. So... If I do something else, which is, this is my medicine, this is my chemotherapy. Because remember, all medicines come from food. And instead of smashing them up and changing them and making money out of them, why don't we go back to these ancient herbalist techniques where we can actually take the power of the whole plant, the intelligence, and run it through the body for balance. That's the world I would like to see. So anyway, I take my juice. And I look at it and I feel it. I feel the life force from it. And I drink it knowing the impact as it runs through my body, that it's picking up anything that needs to be removed. It's giving the cells a wee massage via the enzymes. And my kidneys, my gallbladder, my liver, my spleen, everything's going into this state of joy, right through into the stomach, through the bowel, and out through the other side and that whole journey through the body is what helps the body to heal and then of course we can't well, there's two other things we have to talk about sleep and hydration so the the and a part of hydration is your salts as well how is, is the body conducting the information now again if you look and i'm bringing the biofield and the chakra viewer to the goddess gatherings and to the festival so you'll be able to see it there yourself it will be at scotland's wild medicine you're going to get a free viewing um, and uh, reading because we can see what are we holding the body remember is light and information so when we eat an organic apple, like the other day, I just pulled the beetroots out the ground, the spinach, the kale, 
the apples off the tree through the juicer and into my body. And I was just like, oh my God, that is such a luxury. Don't you think? You know, I mean, that's the way it was meant to be. You just go and get your food out the garden and then you swap. Some people grow some things and you swap it around. It is just crazy how disconnected we've got from that system. We go out in the loch there and pick up some mackerel and then we can just um, eat the mackerel fresh from the sea. Hi, May, thank you. Um, so, you know, that's the way it used to be. You would just go and get whatever was in season, whatever was in the garden, and you would swap it around. We didn't wait in the supermarket lorries bringing food in that's been out the ground for donkeys. So let's get to food. What to eat? If you've got a diagnosis or a dis-ease, the body's in a state of disharmony and it's shouting, hello, hello, there's too much of one thing, toxicity, and there's not enough of another thing, nutrients coming in here. What am I supposed to do? And then when you do put good good nutrition in, you hate it and you're wishing you didn't have to do it and you're, you don't have time, yada, 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 yada. So all of that stuff is going on in your head instead of going, right, just come into the present moment. What food is going to work for me? Now, it used to be, obviously, but the great thing is we do have access to a lot of stuff we would never have had access to before. And that can be very helpful when you're on a healing journey because quite simply, most of us don't have gardens full of medicines. But we do have a canal bank here in our guile laden with medicines. Um, but unless you know all about that, so find somebody who's foraging in your area and get beside them and learn. By the way, the way of medicine book, it's all in there. The incredible stuff that you can do and put through your body to create harmony. But what, where do you start? Well, the first place to start two, three things that you can do. One, cut out the three whites. White sugar, white carbohydrates, flour, and white rice, processed rice. Right, these three things, take them out of your diet. Now, flour, that means all your breads and all your, um, the shitty breads that you buy in the supermarket, usually. Um, all your cakes and biscuits. So just cut these three things out and watch the body transform. There's a big thing about gluten. A lot of people can't obviously deal with gluten, but the, the one of the biggest problems with the grains is they're genetically modified and bleached and then made into a product and then yeast put in. And what do you expect the body to do with that? It's been so unbelievably processed and destroyed. Don't eat anything that's genetically modified if you can possibly avoid it. Because not only is it genetically modified, it's sprayed with God knows what, all seven known carcinogens. And then we're eating that and putting it into this amazing body for day after day after day after day after month after month after year. So what on earth do you expect to happen? Of course, what is in there, the digestive enzymes, it's the, the body It's like putting far too much washing into your washing machine. It just doesn't work and it'll maybe work a wee bit, to, you know, to start with. But you pull it out, the clothes haven't been washed properly and eventually your washing machine breaks down, which is what's happening to all of our digestive systems. Now, I don't even blame anybody anymore. <laughs> I used to think it was just as easy. Just make better choices. You know, I was that arsehole that actually just thought it was just as simple as making better choices. But I now understand it's not because a lot of the food that's that's there available and in a price range that's affordable is poisoned. It's crap. So people are, and, and also there's an education situation where people really genuinely do not know. And that's why we want to, at next year's festivals, really focus in on the education and how to make great food cheaply and get people growing their own food again. So once you've taken the the three white things out. Um, hi, Adrian. Take them out. <clears throat> the rule number two, 1A is don't be hungry. 
always have plenty of food in your fridge. You know, make soup, make loads of it, put some in your fridge, put some in your freezer, make a dal, make it, I'm talking about dal, not because I'm vegan, but because it's cheap, you can get lentils cheap, you can turn it into a dal easily and cheaply. And so always be prepared, Scout, brownie scout motto, that, you know, if you're not prepared, that's when things go haywire. And I think now that you can get your shopping delivered to you once or twice a week, you can just do that and make sure you've always got your veggies in. If you've got a juicer and you've got a soup pot, you can just shove all the veggies in. You never waste a thing. There's no need. And just take an hour, a couple of times a week to look at that and be prepared. Number two free tip is when you eat. <clears throat> and this is an, another absolute no brainer because it's free. And you know how I do like free things. Because I truly believe that our health should never be tied to business. <laughs> and I also believe if I know something that can help your health, you shouldn't have to pay me to get that information. I just think that's mental on every level. <clears throat> anyway, I digress. When you eat, what time are you eating? Now, there's a brilliant book called, oh my God, it's about girls fasting. Fasting for girls. There you go. Because we are, men and women are different, regardless of the current climate, we are biologically different. And we have these very clear cycles, menstrual cycles, which really affect how we feel, what we do, what we should be doing. Um, and also we have children that absolutely affects everything. I'm going to go into the mums across Scotland a lot in a lot more depth because a lot of my clients are young mums with children. And I'm like, how do you try and heal when you're trying to raise a family and do and work a job? So that's something we need to look at closely because our government's not going to do it. But when you eat is key to changing everything because you think 80% of your daily energy, give or take, goes on digesting your food. OK, that's a lot. So digesting food takes a lot of energy. And you might notice, as I often do, once you've eaten, you get tired. Because the body's like, right, lie down while I try and make sense of all this stuff you've just shoved into your body, right? So you've got 20% energy left to do all the other amazing things that you want to do in your life. So if you that 80%, is, you're stealing 10, 15, 16, 17%, it just, just doesn't leave you with very much energy to do all the other amazing things, i.e. raising kids. Cooking for kids, you know, deciding all these different things. I've got ideas about that as well, about how we can commun communally feed our children and cut down, because I don't know about you, but that used to be one of my biggest stresses. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, every day for 15, 20 years. It's exhausting. So the time that you eat, and again, this is a really good habit to get your kids into, no food, to preferably three hours before bed, but maybe two hours before bed. So the idea of supper, they get their supper. If they go to bed at eight o'clock, the last fill up is six o'clock. They go to bed at nine. You, you can you can make it six. It depends what issues you're dealing with. So that because what happens then is you digest your food before you go to bed. And then when you're in bed, providing you've not got your computer on till two in the morning, the healing hormones start to flood in between 10 and 2. And again, people want to correct me because they usually do. It's not an exact science, but this is a ballpark. Um, so the healing hormones start to flood in when you're in these states of sleep. And we've got all these deep states where the brain frequencies change and the body literally re restores and repairs and revitalizes itself. If all these things are in place, if you want somebody to build you a tiny house and you don't give the person, the builder, any building materials, the house can't be built. And it's the same with us. Long term, we need to be thinking, let me give the body the building bricks that it needs, i.e. real whole foods. <laughs> I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it, really? And then it can do, the microbiome can grab a hold of all the little bits and pieces and fix things. Now, 
genuinely speaking, I don't think we have to be hugely, hugely um, complicated about food. You know, there's nothing wrong with a good old fashioned plate of mincing potatoes with lots of carrots and turnip and onions and some broccoli. You know, that's a good dinner if it's good quality beef and, you know, preferably organic um, veggies, especially anything that's got a skin. But you can soak your veggies in bicarbonate of soda, which, and that will take, or apple cider vinegar, that will take the surface pesticides off until we can start actually working with our farmers to provide real food that we don't need to pay to say it's organic because it just is. We actually have to pay to say it's covered in carcinogens. I mean, it's mental when you think about it. Health and safety and trade and standards. You're not allowed to say that food is safe but you don't have to say that food is not safe. What is going on in our world? Anyway, I digress again. So take out the three white things, <clears throat> white sugar, white processed sugar, white processed flours and white processed rice. Take that out. Stop eating two, preferably three hours before you go to bed. Now, I found that quite a, an interesting wee habit to break um, because... When I was looking after my mum, I was in the house and I was bored and I was eating because I was bored and because there was a lot of shit in the house, <laughs> which I realised I'm just like everybody else. If that's in the house, um, <clears throat> then I'll eat it. <laughs> so it's obviously much, much easier if it's not in the house. Yes, Kim, and I think that apples, apple trees are everywhere in Scotland. Um, you know, it's one of the things that we can easily have um, just grown, you know, while we should ha that's what we should have all over our green areas so that we can get these apples and then we can make them into delicious desserts and a great snack for the kids. And we know that they're safe and they're not coated. But also we need to be looking at the quality of the food and why we're allowing the government <laughs> to sell that shit. It makes no sense whatsoever. So the gut biome. Um, thanks, Stinky. Um, so the gut biome, let me get, because I'm doing a lot of training in this because it really, you can go down a rabbit hole of parasites, amoebas, prions, oh my God, worms, tapeworms, all of this stuff, um, which it's really, really important to know because what can happen is, and this is why ivermectin works, it's, it's a dog wormer. Yeah, but we're, dog's just a, a, a mammal like us. And it takes the worms out. And when the we get take the worms out, the body can heal. You know, so thanks, Anne. We're, what, because what we're still doing is we're looking at the symptom. Oh, I've got arthritis in my shoulder. Almost certainly gut. And um, if, especially osteoarthritis, it, rheumatoid arthritis is a different thing completely. So when you have, for example, type 1 diabetes, there could be a tape 1 in the pancreas. This is the, I'm not telling you this is the truth. I'm just telling you this is the training I'm doing right now. And if we just didn't understand that there's something in there eating all the, and and really impacting on the how the pancreas can work and the inflammation in the pancreas and the root cause is actually a tapeworm i'm using diabetes just as an example but it's all the diseases oh and the viruses and the yeast and the fungus that in there in that stagnant pond that is our digestive system then the body starts to flare and you got all these symptoms and we all get it slightly differently autoimmune responses and then we can't eat foods that are even real whole foods because the gut gets per uh, perforated and the, our pond, you look like it like a pond, morning Doreen, it, gets, it becomes stagnant and the pH changes and becomes a hot bed for these little critters to thrive. Right, so and then what do we do? Oh, take a pill, cut something off, cut a bit out blah, blah, blah. And that may be necessary in some situations, but it's absolutely unnecessary in a lot of situations when we start to truly understand that the body's an ecosystem like the barrier reef and everything lives in harmony when the water is clean and the temperature's right. 
as simple as that. It's um, absolutely, hi Sean, hi darling, I'm great. So instead of, so looking at that bioterrain, and we know that emotions impact the gut hugely, 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 maybe even more than the food, to be honest. But the food gives us the baseline <clears throat> and starts allowing the heart and the brain to communicate. The hydration, the salts, allows the flow of information. Take out the shit that feeds inflammation and, and then just spend a few weeks, you know, tapping. I'll do a video on that about any food addictions, about not being enough. Like my clients, if they're trying to heal something that they've been told they can't heal, <laughs> um, they've got the fear from the doctors. You can't do this, you can't do this, you need this, you need this. You've got somebody putting their belief system right onto you. And it's like, what? And you, you need to have a certain kind of intuition and courage to say, that's your belief system, that's your point of view. My body, my ecosystem, I know what's right for me in here. And that might not be something that I don't even know. Like, I'm, I don't know what people's bodies need, but can I help you tap in to listen deeply into that innate wisdom and intelligence? Yes, I can. But then you go back to the fear, but what if, what if I die? <laughs> well, we're all going to die. It's just how we choose to do it from now on in. I mean, I'm climbing up my 60s now. And you know that your time is going to be, um, you know, you don't have the time you had when you're 20, if, if we all live to a reasonable age. And how is that going to look, that ageing process? Because what happens, obviously, is as we, we our health peaks and then we start to slow down and things change and menopause obviously dramatically changes everything. And so our body's needs and requirements are different, you know, I... I went into type, well, kind of borderline type 2 diabetes after the menopause. I had no idea that was a common thing to do. Postmenopausal arthritis, super common. But it's all coming from the same thing. Inflammation in the gut. And when you get that inflammation, it becomes a breeding ground for all things that we don't want in there. And when, so that impacts on your entire system. So to try and narrow it down to one thing, what vitamin, what food should I eat? We have to stop that. We have to look at it holistically. And we just go, right, let me just get whole foods in. Let me get the three white, the white shite out. <laughs> and with the light and out the shite, you know the mantra. Let me stop eating two, at least two hours, maybe three before I go to bed. Let me really look at my hydration. Um, and be honest about how much water I drink per day. Keep an eye on your blood pressure, your blood sugar, etc. Especially as you get, you know, near 50, perimenopausal age. And then you can start to, then you're, then you're on top of it. You know, you'll feel the body. Even I've got all this amazing technology, but I don't even really need it. But people do, they need the test because we've been brainwashed into thinking, this person here will tell me about my body by looking inside it. We even need a scientist to tell us that dancing's good for us. I mean, please give me a break. We know all this stuff. The power is within. And in November, myself, Jennifer Main, Julie Fubster are coming on a tour around Scotland called Enter the Field of Inner Knowing. And you can come along to these goddess gatherings all over Scotland and learn how to get in there and trust and feel your inner power. Because we, it's the innate intelligence is just, it just is. But the way we've been programmed and conditioned is to give our power away to somebody else, very often in a white coat or somebody with a PhD or somebody with a better postcode or somebody with more money. And I think we're starting to see now if you're not starting to see it now, well, there's no hope for you. That really? Who's the best person for your body? Who knows what's right for you? Feel into the your inner intelligence because the body is speaking to you. But you might not be listening. You might not understand the language, but that's okay. You can learn it. 
So that inner knowing and that understanding of the invisible side to the body. Because let me tell you, you could be healing cancer and you wouldn't even know. How would you know? Because you can't feel it. You can't feel the body healing most of the time. You can't, you, you've got to trust, haven't you? Oh, I'm putting in all the right stuff and I'm doing all that. But then the actual stress of doing all the right things is overriding the doing the right things. So we need to get, take a step back and go, whoa, 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 calm down here. The best thing you can do on a daily basis, apart from taking out the white shite and stopping eating at night before you go to bed, is stay in an expanded state of ex courage, acceptance and peace. Hi, John. Hi, darling. Um, <clears throat> so when you, as soon as you move from rest and restore into fight or flight, you're changing your chemistry. And you might just be thinking, I don't want to drink this juice. I don't want to do a coffee anymore. Oh my God, I'm late for school. I'm late for work. The kids are doing this. The kids are really annoying me. My partner's really... So that's taking you out of the healing state and you started to go lower your own IQ. So part of healing on a day-to-day -day basis is rewiring your own brain for to take you from from fight or flight in to rest, restore and repair. Because worrying about dying could actually be the thing that causes you to die. And what an oxymoron that is. So we need to look at this thing. What is it? We're all going there. But preferably not today. Um, so we, for me, certainly plant medicines have helped me to see out with this version of reality. That might not be for everybody. Breath work can take you there as well. Absolutely. Meditation can take you there. And that's what we need to be understanding is that we are magnificent. <laughs> and when you see the biofield, you will absolutely see that with your own two eyes. How when you eat certain foods, your electromagnetic field changes. When you think certain things, your electromagnetic field changes. And then you can gently steer your ship wherever you want to go without fear because this is a big thing living without fear and stress and you know our government are just piling it on again and it's up to us whether we take it on this time and you know the cost of living crisis all the god how do you know who and what to believe so that's when we're being forced to go in because in here when we connect to the divine field of potential and probabilities, we can tune into what is right for our body. And nobody can tell you what is right for your body apart from you. So that's a big responsibility. Sorry, everybody wants, what's the right that one diet? What's the one let and go technique? What's this? What's the one vitamin? What's the one mushroom? We're all looking outside. Tell me what to take so that I can feel safe, so that I'm not scared, so that I'll heal. And the reality is getting inside, calming down. Our system's bred on fear in, in the nicest possible way because we have one option when we go into the system, drugs and surgery, the two options that you'll be offered. Um, if you're lucky, <laughs> you might not even get that now um, or an appointment with somebody in a year's time. We have to take responsibility back into our own hands and the hands of our communities because true healing an understanding of who you really are and why you're here and what you came here to do. No genius, no guru, no coach is ever going to work that out for you. Can they guide you? Absolutely. And if you can afford to work with somebody, then I highly recommend that you do. But what about the people that can't afford to work with somebody? What do they do? They're not, they don't have access and that's why we have to have this available in communities for free. And there's this belief. If people don't pay for it, they don't appreciate it. Bollocks. People pay for things and don't appreciate it. When people know you're coming from a heart-led space, when every community has their own shaman, until people understand they don't even need a shaman, because everything they need to know about their own body is in here, inside. When you connect to the infinite stream of information, and you ask the right questions, ask and you will receive. It's a universal law. Anyway, I'm ranting on and on and on here. I really just came to talk to you about food. 
So that's your two simple things that you can do. And if, interestingly enough, my cousin was, uh, she said it's bread. She just took out bread and her whole health picture has completely changed. So again, we're wanting somebody with a microscope, somebody with a pill to tell us. If you are well enough and you're not terribly addicted and you can make better choices, then please do that. And what we need to look at as well, and my friend Hilary, I'm going up to Sky next week to teach there. Um, and <clears throat> we're going. she's written a book, The Sweet Cure, because she was a self-confessed sugar addict. So we'll look at, well, what can we do emotionally to stop ourselves? Because it's all one. They say that sugar's more addictive than heroin. I don't, and they reckon that a third of our population is addicted to it. So, but that's something we don't talk about because it's legal and let's face it, it's bloody well everywhere. Um, and it's very difficult to keep your children away from it. Very difficult. You, you know, you're seen as a bit of a freak if you try to even contain the amount of sugar they're putting into their bodies on a daily basis. So, but we need to get that word out and we need to have the right support and understanding about the microbiome causing the cravings and what you do to rewire your brain for um, making better choices. But ultimately, what the thing that's going to make it easiest is if we all do it together, community. Community and altruism heals. So with that, I will leave you on this beautiful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. And please share the word about Heal Scotland. If you know anybody in Sky, then... Um, Please let them know that I'm coming up there. We're doing free workshops, free food. It's going to be amazing on our beautiful island. Um, yes, Claire, we'll, 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 we're going to, Hilary and I are going to do some stuff on sugar addictions and how to uh, minimise it and how to eat sugars that give you nutrition as well, you know, via um, cacao and fruits and stuff like that. So we'll, give you, we'll be giving you lots of good tips. Um, and next, in two weeks... Rory McPhee is coming to the farm. We've got two places left. Foraging for seaweed. Rory is just like a mine of incredible information. And we're going to be eating. He's going to be cooking for us all this delicious food. Check out the menu. It is absolutely orgasmic. Um, and we're, you, we'll be at the farm. You'll get all the phenomenal salads and stuff that Andrea has been growing there it's just quite remarkable right now what we've got there um, and next weekend next Saturday I'm at Connect Festival doing a talk I think about half past five um, on the Saturday so that's very exciting so I'm going to be in Sky from Tuesday from Tuesday well Wednesday through to Saturday and then Edinburgh Saturday Sunday Monday so um, yeah Please share the events, share the love, share the message, and um, yeah, let's get let's get this country's health picture turned round because we can. Huge love, ciao.